Donald Trump may like what he sees tonight, but as John Bachman reports, the view from the top is precarious and subject to change. Well, J.D., people love to discount the polls, especially at this point in the campaign when we know who the candidates are going to be, but we haven't had the conventions yet. But you may have also heard this election year, it's entirely different this time around with two candidates that are so well known to the American voter. Over the last two months, Donald Trump has been surging. The real clear politics average of national polls has seen Hillary Clinton's lead completely evaporate. Once up by 11 points at the end of March, now Trump's leading ever so slightly. <laughs> Still, Hillary may get the last laugh, at least according to Predicted.org, a website which uses real money bets to develop odds. They give Democrats a 58% chance of winning the White House. Another site, PredictedWise.com, which uses data and market research to make predictions, gives Democrats a 67% chance of winning. David Rothschild, who runs PredictWise, tells the Wall Street Journal, quote, Trump's improved showing in the opinion polls reflects a bounce from the exit of other GOP contenders, and that Mrs. Clinton should expect to see a similar bounce in the polls when and if she defeats party rival Bernie Sanders. Also, Cliff Zukin, a professor of public policy and polling expert at Rutgers University, recently told NPR, quote, this is a weak moment to measure Clinton's support because Bernie Sanders supporters are beating on her. History tells us that forthcoming events should change the trajectory of the polls. Certain statements or misstatements can also move the needle. Just ask Mitt Romney. There are 47% of the people who vote for the president no matter what. After that remark, just two months before the election, the RCP average tilted in President Obama's favor and never returned back. It's not even June of 2016 yet. Here I have to rant and rave, I have to keep you people going, otherwise you're gonna fall asleep on me, right? And even if the Trump campaign has rewritten the rule book, time is a great equalizer, especially in politics. Now we've also talked uh, recently about the extremely high unfavorables for both Clinton and Trump. Take a look here, Clinton, Favorable rating of 37%, unfavorable 56%. Again, this is according to the Real Clear Politics average. Trump, favorable 35%, unfavorable 58%. Now, some pollsters say not only does this tell us that these candidates are not very well liked, per se, but the people already know who they are. So unlike a lot of other presidential races at this point, late spring, early summer, there may not be as much flexibility with Hillary and Trump as we move closer to November. J.D.? All righty, John, thank you very much. And now for this quick reminder, we will be taking your calls over the next hour at 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629. Call in with a question or a succinct comment, and we will put you on the air live. And now let's put a gentleman on the air live who's got quite a few things to say about politics and polling in particular, Skyping in from Atlanta, Georgia pollster Matt Towery. Matt, also the author of News Vesting. Use news and opinion to grow your personal wealth. So Matt, you just uh, decided to, um, to cash your in on your columns. Others are doing active polling, but you can give us the inside on what is happening here. And uh, this whole average of the uh, Real Clear Politics uh, major polls that Real Clear Politics does. How big a deal is it at this juncture having Donald Trump move ever so slightly ahead? Well, first of all, kudos to you, to your synopsis of polling. You were dead on in almost every observation. And uh, as far as Real Clear Politics, their average is very important. In fact, I, I went back to, to look at where John McCain was at this point uh, and, and where Mitt Romney was at this point. Neither one of them were doing as well as Donald Trump. Doesn't mean that Donald Trump will defeat Hillary Clinton. What it does mean is uh, there isn't much room for Mitt Romney to be talking about forming a third party. So this thing is a two-person race. We shan't call it a two-man race lest we give Hillary the chance to play the woman card. Uh, but <laughs> this thing is really a nail biter. There's another element that I did not talk about, but I'm interested how pollsters view that. And that is, of course, the fact that we elect our presidents via the Electoral College, electoral votes. Are Republicans these days at a distinct disadvantage when it comes to the Electoral College? They are, and this is actually where Donald Trump is the big, um, sort of the changes things up a bit because what we're seeing is Trump being competitive in states where we really haven't expected Republicans to be very competitive in recent years. I mean, everyone looks at Pennsylvania as one example. It's a good one. It's a sort of a northeastern, midwestern, uh, mid-Atlantic, northeastern uh, microcosm of America like Florida is. 
and he's competitive in Florida as well. So uh, from the Electoral College standpoint, I'm not sure that Trump nomination necessarily hurts the Republicans. They've been having a hard time holding their electoral map. And as you know, that map is slipping further and further against the GOP as we get down the road. So, Matt, if you had to talk about uh, the electoral states, you mentioned Pennsylvania. Is Michigan, in your opinion, another one up for grabs? And might there be a surprise in the grab bag of electoral states marching on to November for the Republicans? I'll tell you, I mean, I've even seen, as crazy it may sound, I saw one poll where California was up for grabs. It's a, I don't expect that. But what I do think is you're going to have such an unusual general election, just like we had an unusual primary season, that anything could happen. I do think, uh, for example, that Pennsylvania will be up for grabs. Ohio, uh, Trump seems to lead in, in some a good number of the polls here, but he needs John Kasich to come home at some point. Those are critical states. Uh, but there could be others that we could see that would be marginally positive for Trump that we haven't seen in ages, Michigan being one of them. At the same time, we also have to remember that Hillary Clinton is a strong campaigner. I never underestimate Hillary or Bill Clinton, because they are they are they know the art of politics like no one else in America. So um, this will be a nail biter to the bitter end, regardless of how the individual states look like they're flowing with five or six days to go. All right, Matt, let's uh, bring in viewers who have some comments. Let's go to Lake St. Louis, Missouri, where Ron is on the phone from the show me state. Ron, what do you think of the latest polling? Well, hello, J.D. Uh, thank you for taking my call. You bet. Okay, uh, well, first of all, my wife and I watch your show continually. And, Bless you. Uh, we're both Trump supporters. Uh-huh. Now, looking at the poll, uh, you know, you got several polls where one poll, Trump is up, the other one, he is down. Uh, I think eventually that will straighten out as it gets closer and closer to the, uh, the uh, Republican convention. But uh, the one big thing that I also wanted to mention is that, uh, you know, recently Trump lost uh, the 40 delegates in the state of Washington, and he still hasn't reached the magic number of 1237. And I hope that uh, that becomes a priority for him just prior to that, especially uh, with the upcoming uh, votes that are going to take place on June the 7th from the, the other four or five states. Ron, you make an excellent point, as befits a caller from the Show Me State. Thanks, thanks for watching. And let me go back to Matt Towery about the atmospherics of the convention. Ron mentioned Washington State and still the, the vibrancy, the vitality of the cruise forces out in that situation, the Pacific Northwest, atmospherically. What happens in Cleveland? Matt, do, do we a see a situation we've seen in past years where everybody comes together? I think about Nixon in, in Miami in 68, despite Rockefeller and a late effort by Ronald Reagan. Everybody got together and was singing from the same sheet of music. Do you expect that? Or is there still an opportunity for mischief on the part of the never Trumpers? We've got about a minute left in this segment. Well, I think there's an opportunity for mischief, but it won't be to try to take the nomination. I think those numbers will be locked down after California. They're going to try to take the platform and the, make the platform as conservative as possible and hope that Trump reacts negatively to it. My suspicion is Trump will take the platform however they want to pass it. If he's smart, he won't have a battle over that because no presidential candidate is stuck with their platform. Their platform is what comes out of their mouth. And with Donald Trump, anything can come out of his mouth. And that actually thus far has proven to be an asset. Will that change as we move into the general election or based on what you've seen, is Trump the kind of disruptor where he is speaking to those fed up with, uh, with political correctness? Again, about 20 seconds for your answer, Matt. A lot of it depends on how Hillary handles Bernie Sanders. She has got to bring Bernie Sanders folks in more than Trump has to bring Republicans in. They'll come into the fold before it's over. But the Sanders people have to be brought into the Clinton side. I think she'll do it, but it's going to take some work. We mentioned Washington State. And on the other side of the break, I understand we have a viewer who has called in. Uh, from the state of Washington. So we'll want to get their opinion and we want to get your opinion and your questions and comments as well. Again, here is the number you call 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629. More with Matt Towery and with you when we come back.